So what we're all doing here in the Balance You Training and when we come together for these open meetings is normalizing all of our data, our internal data, our external data. And what we, when we refer to data, we mean any thoughts, any emotions, any experiences, any sensations, bodily sensations, any belief systems or assumptions about how the world works. So anything that we can perceive, we simply call it data. It makes it very simple to integrate the training when we just call everything data and then the context for data is open intelligence. We're, we're gaining confidence and trust in something that is always on for us, that's always reliable, and that is open intelligence, our very own open intelligence. So we have data and we have open intelligence, or sometimes it's called the view, and then all of the points of view that occur within the view. Now conventionally, we look at all of the data or the, the points of view very individually and very specifically. And we look to all of those, like our thoughts, and we look at our thoughts and we say, uh, my well-being is dependent upon the thoughts that I'm having. So if I'm having lots of thoughts, if they're anxious, or if I'm always thinking about what needs to happen, if I'm always thinking about whether, wh what others expect of me or what I expect of myself, you can see the amount of energy that goes into emphasizing all of our thoughts. You know, even in dreams, the dreams are just filled with many, many thoughts. So if we focus in on that data stream of thoughts, it can be very exhausting. You know, I was very exhausted from uh, analyzing all of my thoughts and I, I reached the point where I wanted them to stop. I wanted to have some stillness in my day where there were no thoughts going on. So I tried many things to stop the train of thought and to try to hold it uh, at bay, hold it so that the thoughts wouldn't appear, trying to master some kind of state where there was no, no thoughts. And, and, that, and that always failed for me. I was able to maybe do it for um, a period of time, but then it would always just creep back in. It was like trying to hold water uh, away and inevitably it just coming rushing back in. So I was increasingly frustrated with trying to have a, a thought-free uh, thought state. Now in Balanced View, uh, there's no need to go for a thought-free state. Uh, in Balanced View, and the way things are in reality is that thoughts are inseparable from open intelligence. Uh, they're just completely inseparable, like the color blue is inseparable from the sky. You cannot separate the two. In fact, you cannot separate any data or any points of view from open intelligence. Now, open intelligence, when you really look at it, what is its essence? It, it's, um, if you just stop thinking for a moment, you can identify open intelligence. And you just stop the train of thought for a moment, just the, brief, the briefest moment, and acknowledge your own power to know what's looking, what's sensing, what's feeling. You know, it doesn't need any labels put on it to make it real in your experience. So when we identify open intelligence, we see that it's naturally present. It's perfect and pure by nature. It's vast and indestructible. And this is really the source of our well-being. This is the source and essence of our well-being. And it's fundamental to thoughts, emotions, and sensations. So if the essence of all of your thoughts and all your emotions and sensations is this perfect, pure, vast expanse, therefore, by virtue of that, all of your thoughts, emotions, sensations are also pure, perfect, and indestructible. They just, it's just the misinformation of saying the label that we've put on everything means that it must be negative or it must be harmful or that we need to act upon it. If we're having desirous points of view coming up, conventionally we've been trained to act on it. You know, it's such a strong impulse and our role models always seem to be acting upon desire. Uh, and then we grow up and we start acting upon that desire. So every time it comes up, we think we need to engage in that desire. So that's how we have been living. 
Now another choice is to, when that desire comes up for you and it's very strong and potent, uh, to take short moments of, uh, of emphasizing open intelligence. Let the description be as it is, just like letting the breeze in the air be as it is. Or maybe uh, letting uh, a hurricane in the air be as it is, something very powerful. But just letting it be as it is for a short moment. Not indulging in it for a short moment, not avoiding it or trying to replace it. And simply resting, emphasizing Again, that wide open intelligence. Now when you do this, you start to see the real essence and meaning of all of that uh, data that we call afflictive. Even the desire seems like it can be afflictive if we feel like we need to act it out, yet we don't want to, and it just creates this whole uh, you know, push and pull. Just let it be as it is, and you see at the, at the basis of it, it really does not have that power to direct any of our actions. And then over time of this practice, of short moments of allowing all of your data, all of your thoughts, emotions, sensations to be as it is for short moments, over time you start to notice that there is a pervasive mental and emotional stability, regardless of what your thoughts are, your emotions, or your sensations. So you see that in your own being you have complete stability. It's available to you all the time. So we just need to tap into that again and again. So short moments is the reminder. Actually, the affliction is the reminder. You feel afflicted? Okay, step one, there's a reminder. Just take a short moment, allow it to be as it is, and recognize the source and essence of it. And then you'll start to find that you, you find yourself in situations where there is intense desire arising. And you start to see you have a choice in that situation of how you respond. Very naturally, we start to see beneficial solutions in all circumstances. We start to see the, the, all the energy, like in anger or desire, sexual desire, desire for food or coffee or anything, substances. It's just this welling up of this energy. And when, when you don't label it as something you know, putting a dictionary label on it, and you start to see it's just the, this spontaneous altruism to be of benefit, you know, this energy to want to contribute. And you know, that this, you have to test this in your own experience. When any of these things come up for you, just test it. Let it be as it is, and over time, it just, it's like all of the, the data just start to settle down. They don't have so much impact or importance anymore, yet life becomes much more vitalized and enlivened and empowered. <clears throat> I mean, that's what we're all doing here together, is empowering one another. To see that we are such, we're so powerful as human beings, we can really create an amazing world to live in, and we're actually doing it. When we're not at the whim of the thoughts, of the emotions, of the sensations, then we're able to really create beneficial society. And we start with ourselves, creating an internal beneficial society. It's like all of your data is it's your own society, you know? You've got your whole constellation. And when you're able to start letting yourself be as you are, all of the expectations you have on yourself, Really making a commitment to say, I'm not going to be hard on myself. Just make it one day at a time. You know, we're so used to being hard on ourselves, but just really relaxing with all of the expectations you have on yourself. And start to recognize your ease, your power, your potency. So when you, you test that in your own internal constellation of data, then you see that it, it naturally spreads out to everyone else around you. And then you want to contribute. You contribute to your, the people that are immediate to you and your family, and then you start seeing, well, I can contribute to the local communities, and then on a global scale. So it's really quite amazing. I mean, you'll see it happening in your own life. It'll be this natural shift. And hanging out here with the community, you, you see other people demonstrating this. Uh, there's an example of somebody who has been practicing short moments and allowing their internal data to be as it is and, and demonstrating a, a life of benefit. 
in my own experience, I've just seen the obsessive self-focus naturally slip away. You know, going from being completely caught up in thoughts, emotions, and sensations, and feeling at the whim of them. You know, if anger came up, feeling angry with myself and other people, and then shutting down. Or if desire came up, really just not behaving in a, in a skillful way, or any of these things. Seeing all that naturally, effortlessly, just fall away, like th this breeze just falls away. The only practice I was engaged in was the short moments of allowing everything in my life to be as it was, and then also relying on the support that was offered. Relying on my trainer to help me in difficult situations. Participating in all the training media and the trainings that were offered. Really hearing these words again and again about my empowered identity, seeing that I wasn't a victim of my circumstances. And then hanging out with the community. You know, hanging out with the community, other people won't let you spin off into your stories about all the negativity or desire or any of that kind of stuff. You know, we all support each other in, in an empowered way of living. And that's just very obvious and evident and natural. The thing that attracted me about, about this is uh, just the authenticity of everyone. You know, you can sense a real authenticity about, about the community and the trainers and the, and the training itself. So, you know, just really what resonates with you, this instinctive recognition of open intelligence, this vast, in indestructible, skillful, open intelligence that's at our disposal, always. It's not something we have to acquire from somewhere or someone else always at our disposal, at our core, you could say. It's our fundamental being. So when we're reminded of this again and again and again, and we just train up in this. And it really does, it comes back to your commitment. Do you really want this, or do you want to keep engaging in all of the, your desires and your judgments and your criticisms and what other people are saying? You really just have to take a stand and say, you know, I, I don't want to be a victim of my data or anyone else's. That's really what it comes down to. So you just make that commitment and you make it one moment at a time. Okay, short moments or emphasize all of my, my stuff. And life gets a lot easier and more enjoyable, more relaxed, but also you see it, it's, it's very powerful. You know, our energy is used in very skillful and meaningful ways.